Alright guys, I am back with my WWE SummerSlam review series and we're on um, SummerSlam 1989 <clears throat> And you know what, I enjoyed this SummerSlam, I actually really enjoyed this one as well uh, To be honest, like the, I've only reviewed like only two of this series so far and I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed both of them back to back um, so basically, SummerSlam 89, um, I thought was a real good pick, like I said, I thought it was really good, um, the Honky Tonk Man and Dusty Rhodes, like, actually, the best story told on this whole pay-per-view, has got to be, that's my phone, by the way, was Rick Crude and the Ultimate Warrior, I really loved how they told this story from WrestleMania 5 on to SummerSlam, and stuff like that, so I really enjoyed that, and that, that reminded me, like, how, Today's WWE can never fall for storyline from WrestleMania to SummerSlam. Like, I look at this pay-per-view and I look at today's WWE and I look like, what WrestleMania feud have they done in the last couple of years that has led from WrestleMania and has, has, you know, ended at SummerSlam? I can't really remember a feud, really, in the modern day that has really done that recently. But there we go. Uh, but anyway, we had... Uh, the first match of the night, well, first match on the actual card, it was Bruno. Uh, no, why did I say? It was um, the Brain Busters versus the Heart Foundation. I thought this was a good match. Uh, basically, the heels were cold, but you see Bret Hart gets a heart tag. But then Bobby the Brain distracts the one that rests. Basically, Arn Anderson comes in and attacks um, Bret. So Bret, uh, Tony Blanchard was the legal man, so he gets the win. Good match um, overall here, and then we had Dusty versus the Honky Tonk Man. Um, I thought that this was a good match here. It was a solid match. Dusty wins with the great, with the with the elbow. Oh yeah! It wasn't the match of my elbow, but I thought I'll do that. Um, then we have Mr. Perfect, and Mr. Perfect makes his um, SummerSlam debut here. He defeated the Red Rooster. Um, that was kind of a squash match, and that was like, oh, that was the only way to really get over Mr. Perfect because I think before then. They was, uh, they was airing those vignettes of him like doing basketball, baseball, bowling, and all that other stuff. And they was throwing him as a, you know, stuff like that. So this was his debut SummerSlam match, and this was um, him against the Red Rooster. And yeah, he won it. Uh, he, you know, it, it was just a squash match for him. We had Rick Martel and the Fabulous Ro Rogers, Ro Rogers. I hope I said that one right. Um, versus uh, the Santanas and the Rock and the Rockers. Um, the heels actually the heels go over in that match. I thought it was a good match. Uh, like I said, the Rockers though, I, I thought that was pretty awesome. Man, like Shawn Michaels and uh, Marty Jannetty. I I never grew up in that era of like seeing those guys, but watching it back, I thought it was a pretty cool tag team. And then we have what my favorite, my favorite match on this SummerSlam card, and that was Ultimate Warrior versus Ravishing Rick Rude for the Intercontinental Title. And this had a really awesome story into it. You had, you know, Rick Rude who defeated the Ultimate Warrior, actually pinned the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 5. And then obviously this led on obviously to um, Rude attacking um, Ultimate Warrior, you know, I think on Primetime Wrestling. And then it would lead up to this match at SummerSlam. And these two guys had a really good match. Rick Rude was an awesome worker. Um, I just want to talk about a couple of bumps in the match. Rick Rude took a sick bump, on, uh, a sick um, body slam onto the outside. I thought that was nasty. Um, then uh, Rick Rude is basically bumping like a madman in, in this match. And then basically Ultimate Warrior is like lifts him up, does his slam, then does his gorilla press, and then he gets the win. Uh, basically, um, there was kind of some ref interference. There was like two ref bumps on this entire show. And uh, after that, the body the brain he is like getting fucking pissed off at this point with Mean Gene. He's like, what the fuck was that, huh? And then, like, body the brain he was fucking awesome doing it. Like, an awesome rant about how Rick Crude was, you know, robbed of his IC title. And then, and then we have Rick Crude who's like, who has this, like, awesome stare at the camera. And um, basically, and then Mean Gene interviews Mr. Perfect, talks about how he squash matches, stuff like that. So. I thought that was a good segment by um, Bobby DeBray. Uh, then we have Jim, we have the Demolition and Jim Duggan versus, oh yeah, 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 I said right. Yeah, Jim Duggan and Demolition versus Andre the Giant, Big Bossman, and Akeem uh, in a six-man tag match with Bobby DeBray and Slick 
um, commentary. Um, I mean, as managers, I thought it was a it was a decent match. Um, Babyface is Glover, you know, decent match. Then we have Greg Valentine versus um, Hercules. Uh, Greg Valentine goes over. Teddy Biasi versus Jimmy Snuka. Um, Jimmy Teddy Biasi defeats Jimmy Snuka. Uh, then we have our main event, and that is uh, the Hulk, we have Hulk Hogan and Br Brutus Beefcake versus the Macho Man Randy Savage and Zeus. Now this was the time when this was only one year removed from when obviously when remember one year ago Hogan and Macho Man were celebrating defeating I don't know what tag team it was uh, SummerSlam '88. And Hogan got that big win, but you got to this WrestleMania, WrestleMania Five, the explosion of the mega powers, and this obviously led to obviously Hogan and Macho Man. Obviously, Hogan got his win at WrestleMania and whatever, and uh, you know, typical Hogan fashion, brother, brother, oh brother, and you know, obviously this led into a tag match, and also because uh, Zeus and Hogan were part of that awful no holes barred movie movie and they brought Zeus in as a celebrity and stuff like that so that was that basically the big faces win Hogan wins with his like drop after that well actually sensational Sherry got thrown into the ring by Miss Elizabeth or something like that because she was man managing Hogan and Brutus Beefcake at the time and then after that I think um, Brutus Beefcake tries to cut um, sensational Sherry's hair so yeah, and that was the end of really SummerSlam 89. I thought it was a good show. Like I said, I've, I've been really enjoying reviewing SummerSlam 88 and 89. Um, so yeah, that is the end of SummerSlam um, 89. My next SummerSlam review is going to be SummerSlam 1990. So um, yeah, I'll watch out for that one. I'll check you later.